part of his father's British Touring Car Championship team, but here revisiting old friends, getting ready for the start of the Super Final, the first of the year. Very slick here at Linen. The revs rise, the clutches at biting point, the red lights are on and away they go. Good launch from the pole sitter, very strong indeed from Steve Hill as well. And he's really going to challenge this time. Oli O'Donovan feeling the pressure again. He has the inside line, Hill gives him a nudge. Third is Carnegie, Lawrence Gibson in fourth place. And then the red escort of Tommy Graham in fifth ahead of Luke Maris and the rest of them. And Steve Hill really has to put the pressure now on Oli O'Donovan. If O'Donovan makes a break and Hill gets caught up with Carnegie, as happened in the A final for the supercars, then it's all done. Now, Carnegie must realize the same. Surely they all want to get in front. These races are so short, there's no real time for strategy and tactics. You've got to have your pedal to the boards all the way through, but Oli O'Donovan is not escaping. As they come across the line at the end of lap one, it's O'Donovan, Hill, Carnegie still very close together. Gibson hanging on in fourth, but he's dropped the rest of them behind. So from these will come our podium. Lawrence Gibson getting a lot of understeer there in the Metro, looking for a tight inside line. And Oli O'Donovan now starting to open up some breathing space. Dermot Carnegie once more all over the back of Steve Hill's Mitsubishi. There's Carnegie in the number three machine, swinging right out wide. Up Harry Hill, looking for some advantage under braking. Can't quite find a way to get on terms with Hill. And Hill again starting to charge after the race leader. Oli O'Donovan sweeps down through Paddock. Halfway through the race, he's got just about enough of a lead to be able to hang on, unless he hits something. Steve Hill right with him, still in second place. There's Luke Maris, already a final winner himself and closing in on Tommy Graham's escort as well. Oh, what a mistake by Steve Hill. Dermot Carnegie gets around him. Yes, he does into second. No, he doesn't. Couldn't quite close the door. Hill with the inside and that's enough. Sneaks back in front, but he's got to be very careful. What a contradiction this sport is. You have to be absolutely flat out and somehow cautious at the same time not to overcook it. Well, Oli O'Donovan is easing away. Steve Hill takes second place back under firm control. Eases away from Dermot Carnegie. Looks like the Mitsubishi's got a little bit in terms of accelerated pace from Carnegie's Fiesta. But Oli O'Donovan one more time round till he sees the chequered flag. And Steve Hill a little safer this time. Carnegie still going to apply the pressure. Now lives in Ivor near Denham in Box, but uh, from the Republic of Ireland. His first season in motorsport, Dermot Carnegie, the year after I was born, 1961. Quite incredible, he's competed every single year since. And a multiple champion in the UK and in Ireland most stars of the stars here today but it's going to be a place on the podium for him but not the top step looks like Oli O'Donovan is in uncatchable form here this weekend Lawrence Gibson closing in in the closing stages I don't think he's got enough Oli O'Donovan sweeps to the victory for the first time in 2008 in the super final Steve Hill in second and uh, Young master Luke Maris has had a successful trip across from the continent. The Belgians, Volvo 242, might be something your dad drove when you were a kid, but it's still a highly competitive rallycross weapon. Oli O'Donovan, though, his Peugeot 306, not quite so long in the tooth, but the 14-year-old car, very much a winner. Steve Hill celebrating a podium.